Have you ever pondered over the depth of loneliness and its impact on individuals? It's a question that tugs at the heartstrings, isn't it? In our bustling, ever-connected world, loneliness seems to be an oxymoron, yet it's a common feeling, a silent epidemic that affects many of us. Loneliness is not just about being physically alone. It's about feeling disconnected, isolated, even in a crowd. It's a complex web of emotions that can have profound effects on both mental and physical health. It can lead to feelings of anxiety, depression, and can even impact our cardiovascular health. Of course, experiencing loneliness is not a sign of weakness. It's a human experience, as real and as valid as any other. It's a mountain we sometimes find ourselves having to climb, a challenge that tests our resilience. But remember, even in the darkest of nights, stars do shine, and it's in understanding, acknowledging, and navigating loneliness that we learn to appreciate those stars. In this seemingly endless sea of loneliness, I found companionship in an unexpected place, a four-legged furry friend who's become my constant companion. A pet, you ask? Yes, but so much more than that. This little creature with a heart as big as the world has become family. When I walk through the door, there's a wagging tail, eyes full of joy and a sense of home. Our walks together have become a ritual. The silence isn't empty. It's peaceful, comforting, a shared moment that transcends words. This bond, this connection, it's therapeutic. It's a refuge from the storm, a beacon in the fog of loneliness. And there's a magical quality to it. The simple act of caring for another being brings a sense of purpose, a feeling of being needed and loved. In their eyes, you'll find an ocean of loyalty and unconditional love. In their company, you'll find a lifeline, a beacon of hope in the vast sea of solitude. The world is a vast ocean, teeming with potential friends waiting to be discovered. And so, like an intrepid explorer, I ventured out, casting my net wide. I found myself joining clubs, communities where shared interests sparked conversations that danced like fireflies under a moonlit sky. From book clubs to hiking groups, each gathering was a voyage into a new world, a chance to learn, to grow, to connect. I also ventured into the digital realm, meeting people from all walks of life who shared my interests, my passions. We exchanged ideas, laughter and sometimes comforting silence. It was here I discovered the power of shared experiences, the joy of discovering common ground. I also found fulfillment in volunteering, in lending a hand where it was needed. The reward was not in accolades or praise, but in the shared smiles, the gratitude, the connections forged in the act of giving. These are the ties that bind us, not by blood, but by shared passions and laughter. In the stillness of solitude, I discovered my superpower. There's a certain magic in the quiet, the stillness, the solitude. It's a space often misunderstood, too often feared. But let me tell you, it's in this very space that I've unearthed the most profound aspects of myself. It's where I've met my thoughts head on, danced with my dreams and painted a canvas of my future. Solitude is not synonymous with loneliness. It's a stage where you become the lead actor, director and audience all at once. It's where the spotlight is solely on you and you get to understand the depth of your character, your ambitions, your fears. It's a place of self-discovery, of self-reflection, where you can hear the echo of your own voice, not overshadowed by the noises of the world. I've taken myself out on dates to the movies with popcorn as my only companion. I've sat in bustling cafes with a hot cup of coffee, immersed in a world of words strung together in books, while the world outside continued its hustle. And in these moments, I found peace, a sense of contentment, it was just me, and it was enough. Doing things alone doesn't mean you're lonely. It means you're comfortable in your own company. It means you're choosing to spend time with yourself, to get to know yourself better. It's an assertion of self-love, a declaration that you too are someone worth spending time with. In this quiet, I've found my voice. I've learned to articulate my thoughts, to communicate with myself. I've gained clarity, honed my decision-making skills. I've found my strength, discovered my resilience. I've learned to be my own cheerleader, my own confidant. In the silence, I've understood that I am not alone. I am with myself, and that is a company to cherish. Embracing the quiet, I've found my rhythm, my pace. I've found the courage to dance to my own beat, to create my own music. So, the next time you find yourself alone, don't rush to fill the quiet. Embrace it, listen to it. You might just hear your own voice, strong and clear. In the silence, I found my voice. 
movement, I realized, is a language that speaks directly to the soul. It's a symphony of rhythm and grace, a dance between the mind and body. You see, when I was grappling with loneliness, I discovered the transformative power of physical activity. It became my sanctuary, a respite from the echoing silence. Whether it was the gentle flow of yoga, the invigorating rush of a morning jog, or the simple joy of dancing around my living room, each movement seemed to stitch together the frayed edges of my solitude. They say exercise produces endorphins, the feel-good chemicals in the brain. Well, I can vouch for that. Every lunge, every stretch, every bead of sweat, they were like little sparks of happiness igniting my spirit. It was as if I was whispering to my loneliness, you cannot cage me, I am alive, I am moving, I am free. In every step, in every breath, I found an echo of joy. In the midst of my solitude, I discovered the healing power of helping others. It's a bit like stepping out of your own world and into someone else's. This journey isn't just about me. It's about how I can make a difference in the lives of those around me. I've found that volunteering at a local shelter, lending a listening ear to a friend, or simply sharing a smile with a stranger can paint my day in brighter hues. The act of giving, you see, doesn't deplete you, it fills you up. It's a heartwarming realization that in our own small ways we can bring a bit of sunshine into someone else's world, and the beauty of it, that sunshine reflects back on us. Helping others doesn't just alleviate their burdens, it lightens ours as well. The act of kindness, the joy of giving, it's therapeutic. It's a form of self-care that you seldom hear about, yet it's so powerful. In their smiles I found my own. The waves of loneliness can sometimes crash hard, but remember, even the stormiest seas eventually calm. It's vital to know that it's okay to feel lonely, it's okay to feel sad. There's no need to paint a smile on your face when your heart is heavy. You see, feelings are not our enemies. They are signals telling us something about ourselves, about our needs, about our dreams. We must listen to them, understand them, and most importantly, accept them. It's like standing in the rain, letting it wash over you. You don't have to run from it or hide from it. You acknowledge it, you let it soak you, and then you let it go. Because, my friend, feelings are not permanent. They're not set in stone. They come and go like the tides. Feelings like the weather are transient. After the storm, the sun always rises. In the vast ocean of life, I found my compass in curiosity. Curiosity, the thirst for knowledge and understanding, is a beacon in the darkest nights and a map when I'm adrift. It's a compass that points me towards unexplored territories and uncharted waters. It drives me to ask questions, to explore, to seek answers, to learn. It's an anchor that keeps me grounded and a sail that propels me forward. It's curiosity that led me to pick up a book on a topic I knew nothing about. To take up a hobby I'd never considered before. To learn a new language, to try a new recipe. Each new experience, each new piece of knowledge is a tiny island of discovery in the vast ocean of life. And every island brings with it a sense of accomplishment, a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging. Curiosity is a conversation starter. It's the spark that ignites meaningful connections. It's the bridge that spans the gap between me and the world around me. It's curiosity that prompts me to ask about someone's day, to listen to their story, to understand their perspective. It's curiosity that makes me a part of a community, a part of a conversation, a part of the world. Curiosity is the antidote to loneliness. It transforms solitude into solitude, isolation into introspection, loneliness into learning. It turns the emptiness of loneliness into the fullness of self-discovery. It fills the silence with the whispers of knowledge, the echoes of understanding, the melodies of wisdom. Curiosity is not just an act, it's a mindset. It's a way of looking at the world, a way of navigating life. It's about seeing not just with the eyes, but with the heart and the mind, about understanding not just the what, but the why and the how. There's a whole ocean out there, and who knows what island I'll explore next. Until then, I sail on, finding treasure in every moment of peace and every new experience.